Okay, section three is about making decisions. So in this case, we're going to look at a particular thing like, is it raining here? And if it is raining, we're going to go up the yes route and say, take the bus to work and arrive at work. On the other hand, if it's not raining, we want to walk to work. So we'll go down that route and arrive at work. What we don't do is we don't do both routes. So we're going to take one or the other. Okay, so a decision allows us to go down one piece of code or another. So here it is in code. And at the top there, you can see this is like you've done before. Raining equals input. Is it raining? Yes or no? So there's a variable called raining and you're asking somebody to input. You're suggesting they put yes or no. And then you're going to check to say if the variable raining is yes, it should say you should take the bus to work. But if raining, the variable equals no, you should walk to work. So if they typed in no, that's gone into raining and walk to work. So here we are typing in yes. So we should get, you should take the bus to work. And that works. And you can try this out as you're doing your code. Let's run it again, type in no this time. What happens this time? You should walk to work, as we expected, because we put nowhere. So it's checking to see the value of that variable, raining, where we typed in after is it raining, no. It checks that line. Does raining equals yes? No, it doesn't, because we typed no. So it skips the rest of the code until it gets to this if and says, well, does it equal no? And it does, so it should print, you should walk to work. And so it does so at the bottom. Okay, let's go on to the next circle page. And this is talking about a block of code that we can control. So similar thing here, we'll just run this, see what it does. So it's saying, what food do you like? And that's because of that first line there, which is an input. So it's asking us to put something in. And the text that's printed is whatever's in green there. It's going to store it in this variable called food. And then it's going to check the value of food to see if we type cake. And if it does, it's going to type these two lines rather than just the one before. So I'll type cake in. And sure enough, it prints out, wow, I love cake too. Did I tell you I like cake? So that's straightforward. Here it's showing that the reason it does a block of code is because of indentation. We've got this, which is indented, but we've also got this last line, which is indented after the, the previous one. Now, after an if, we want one indentation, but if we run this, we get an error. And it says, indentation error, unexpected indent. So it expects the first one because that says that it belongs. So if we take out that extra indent and run it again, what food do you like? Cake. And everything works like the other one. So there's an indentation afterwards. If I put mash, I actually get nothing when it's printed out because there's nothing in there that says if I like mash. So if I extra add an extra line at the back, which isn't indented, it's back at the same level as the if, that should happen after the if has been run. So this time, if I type cake, then I should get all three lines. I should get, wow, I love cake. Did I tell you I love cake? And all finished, because that comes after the if. That will run automatically. And therefore, if I was to type in mash, like I did last time, this time I should get something, because I've put an extra line in that says all finished. So if food equals cake after the input and I put mash so does food equal cake no so I have to skip those two lines and go to the next one which is all finished so that's the one that it does print but it ignores the others so on to the next circle page this is telling you now that you need to use a double equals when you're doing an if and a single equals when we're assigning a value to a variable so this double equals is different to the single name equals grok is assigning grok to the variable name but this is saying does the variable name is it the same thing as this value here grok and if it is it's going to print hello friend so let's run that and it prints hello friend now this is not very helpful because you've typed name equals grok automatically so you know it it does if we were to put an input in there like you've seen before so name e in equals input enter your name get rid of the grok that we put in there now that gives us an option so if somebody was to type in dave for example now dave is not the same as grok so we don't print anything so if i go back in and say okay well let's run that again but this time type grok this is a better test so the variable name has now got grok in it does name equal grok 
Well, now it does, so now it will print hello friend. Okay, your first task, the first diamond on this section three, wants an input that says, what is the password alley? So your code should produce that, and then you're expected to type open sesame. This is like saying food equals input. What food do you like? That would put in what food do you like? Okay, so you're what's in what is the password alley? If they put open sesame, the cave door open should be printed. If they put anything else, then nothing should be printed out. This is a bit like the previous one we're in this one. I said, if I put my name as Dave, there's no code in there after Dave. It's looking to see if it's Grok. If it's Grok, it prints something. If it's Dave, it prints nothing.